put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Death Race movie view. Extended edition, because when you watch a Paul W. Sanderson movie, you want it to last as long as possible. It's the year 2012, or in the year 2012, according to this movie, there was a collapse of the economic system, and it was eerily accurate in that department. Happened sooner, in fact. So the crime rate rises dramatically, presumably because people can no longer, you know, hold down an honest living, but frankly the film never really goes into detail about that, and there's not really anyone in prison who's, you know, who was forced into a life of crime because they couldn't support themselves Honestly, you know, the f first scene has, like, one of the first scenes has the closing down of a plant, and that was, you know, one of the last places to get an honest living, but, yeah, anyway. Thus, the, you know, the government can no longer, you know, run enough prisons, so the prison system is handed over to, you know, private entities, and as is kind of happening in real life, they start trying to make money out of the prisoners, although unlike in real life where it's, you know, basically the prisoners themselves that are trying to make money off, they're making a TV show out of it and expecting people on the outside to pay. How can they pay when the, the economy has collapsed? I don't know, but if we question absolutely everything that doesn't make sense in this movie, we're never going to get through it. The, these death races promise a release for any contestant that wins five times. And in the very beginning there is of, of the film, there is this guy they refer to as Frankenstein who has won four races and then he is killed trying to win a fifth. And since people like Frankenstein, the, the audiences love him, they have to trick Jason Statham, who plays Jensen Ames, which is practically a name. Basically, they have to frame him to get him into prison. I guess they didn't want to wait until he this honest man had to turn into a life of crime, or they didn't actually, you know, put him in jail for beating up riot guards in the beginning of the film. <sighs> Bringing back memories of, you know, watching OWS videos, but anyway, yeah, they frame him for the murder of his wife, and apparently for burning the food or at least the the camera and editing treat both events with you know equal amounts of you know esteem respect so yeah he's you know in prison and just to make sure that he can be recognized later the masked man who actually did do it makes sure to do a gesture that you know Jensen can later you know, recognize so that he will be able to seek his oh so unsatisfying revenge. The but yes, so Jensen, who is an ex-speedway driver and he was really good at it, 
has to pretend to be Frankenstein. It will work since he can wear a mask, although he, he hardly ever wears the mask because most of the time he's out of the car, he doesn't wear it because he's posing as just, uh, well, himself and pretending to be just a grease monkey. And when he's in the car, he doesn't wear it because, you know, who's gonna see it with him in the car? So, yeah, the, he doesn't wear the mask a lot. Now, the... This being a Paul W. Sanderson film, it does manage to be gloriously stupid and mess up even very basic things. There's this continuum, continuing build-up in the film towards, you know, oh, they were certainly building something in there. What, what are they building in there? And eventually you do get to see it, and it's basically, you know, Nemesis all over again. Or, you know, yeah, something else that he did. It basically, a lot of build-up, ba barely pays off, and... Yeah, he just... Yeah, I'm not gonna go into details in the, you know, not in this video. The characters have nothing defining them past their name. You know, everyone in this is basically a hard ass. You know, everyone is cool and willing to risk lives or even outright kill others. Sometimes for absolutely no reason, in fact. So, yeah, there's nothing there. There's really even no proper distinction made between the good guys and the bad guys, you know, both are equally willing to, yeah, kill people, and, yeah, so, really, what we're left with is just, you know, someone killed his wife and framed him for it, so he has to find that person and, yeah, get that revenge, of course, and he's, you know, trying to win this one last death race, and that, of course, yeah, I'll get to the action a little bit, but yeah, the the writing is just not very good at all. There are a ton of plot holes, even really basic and obvious ones. There's not a lot that I can get into here, but I've already gotten into a few about, you know, how he didn't get arrested for beating up riot cops. Unprovoked, by the way. You know, they weren't attacking him anyway. He was, like, defending others. But yeah, why didn't he get charged with anything for that, and, <sighs> yeah, so he, the acting is just basically unimpressive, it's mostly what they're given to work with, you know, because this film has Joan Allen in it, and even she isn't that good, I, I don't know why she's slumming it, it, it might be because there's this one shot where a character is looking almost sort of directly at her, and I guess she was just really jonesing for something like that, you know. After the, the Bourne films, you know, that whole, oh, I'm coming to get you kind of thing. So, yeah. The dialogue, oh, the dialogue is, it, it's literally painful. It, it hurts the ears to hear these strange phrases. Sometimes it's just really convoluted ways of saying very basic and obvious things. And we do, of course, manage to fit in all of the action cliches, even if Paul do does want to pretend that they're not the typical cliches. You know, some of them are actually his own cliches, but they're at least as bad and quite possibly worse than the standard Hollywood action movie cliches. The soundtrack, it varies, but most of the time I barely even noticed that there was music and, I don't know, you know, differing opinions, of course, on that matter. I do kind of feel that in just a straightforward, dumb action movie, which this is unapologetically, and that's fine, you should kind of get into the soundtrack, you know, it should be really like you're humming it during it, you know. Most of the time, I didn't even notice it. The times I noticed it, it tended to be because it was drawing too much attention to itself. Like, there were too many lyrics in a scene where it just kind of, you know... Yeah. The 
And the, the sort of, I guess, main theme of the film, uh, the musically, is this... It sounds to me like they're just warming up, or like trying out their instruments. And it, it actually is only a few notes, as far as I can tell, and just repeats ad nauseum, and I do mean nauseum. The film is shot and edited presumably by people who, for the first third of the film at least, are suffering from withdrawal. After that, they get their fix, and they are clearly stoned while shooting the action scenes, which are, frankly, quite incomprehensible. And I realize this is a recent trend, but that doesn't mean it's a good thing or even remotely acceptable. A race seems like the kind of thing that should be very obvious and easy to make exciting. It's not even just cars driving, it's not even just a car chase, it's a race. If you show us how far the cars are from the finish line and how close they are to each other, we should be able to get into that. But no, the film insists on always keeping that vague, so we can't tell if they're you know, just out of the starting gate, or close to the finish line, or close to each other, or what is going on at all. The... The weaponry, you know, each of these cars have, you know, armor and machine guns. And yeah, those two things do kind of clash, because most of the time when they're firing, they're not hitting anything. You know, it's basically the shootout syndrome of just, you know, people are shooting at each other, but both are in cover, so nobody hits each other for just almost all of the duration. So, yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense that they put that much effort into that at all, but, oh well, I guess, you know, the sound of a gun firing is appealing. Okay, it is. Granted, there are a few shots of the action where it genuinely is exciting, and there are a couple of things, you know, a couple of images that are pretty cool, and, you know, they might stick with me even after tonight. The basic setup of the action and, you know, I don't know if you can call it choreography, is not terribly interesting. Again, a race seems to me like you should have a lot of stuff to play around with there. Although near the end, it seems like Paul actually gets bored and he just decides chucking new stuff in just to... I don't know. Yeah, he got bored with his own movie while making the movie. I don't know what to say to that. The... That might more or less cover it. The pacing is, you know, for for that for a relatively short movie, it's like a hundred minutes, I think, without credits. It actually drags when there isn't action going on, and you know, it being a Paul W. S. Anderson film, obviously, there's. You know, a bit too much action at the same time is not quite enough, you know, like action scenes will either go on for too long or not long enough. So you're either, you know, overstimulated by them or you're just barely getting into it and then it cuts to something else. There are actually, there's at least one action scene that just cuts and goes out of it before it, yeah, right as it seemed like it might be getting interesting. The film also doesn't seem to really be judging the this idea of, you know, millions of people watching people race each other to death. It, it, it doesn't distance itself from this notion whatsoever. And I'm, again, wondering where the people are getting that money to pay a lot to watch people race each other to death, but yeah. Yeah, I believe that pretty well covers it. Finally, just... Statham is, of course... You know, Statham... He's fun to watch in action, so there is at least that. He's, you know, a cool enough action lead, and he can kind of pull off... You know... Both being a likable lead and being, like I said, a hard-ass. 
And Tyrese Gibson, I believe that's his name, the, you know, also one of the leads, also gets to do quite a bit of action. I'm not sure I've seen him in a lot, but he's pretty good here, at least. And Robin Shaw, I hope that's how you pronounce his name, of Mortal Kombat fame, he's not bad, and he does get one of the three funny moments in the entire film. That's not to say that those are the only attempts at humor, but those are the ones that work. Yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.